Hi guys, Mrs. Elvitz here and welcome back to my channel. Let's begin. Okay, let's do visual literacy. Not as bad as comprehension in my view. I think it might even be a little bit easier um, as long as you know what to look out for. Okay, so when we look at um, your visual, um, it, it does get better with practice. So let's look at the different types of visual text that you can get. You can get your comic strips, your comics, graphs, they could be posters or advertisements. Okay, when we look at our comic strips and our comics, you have to look at everything that you see. So um, you look at your frames, your characters, um, are they stereotyping something? Is there angles or lightning? Uh, lightning, uh, lighting, sorry. Um, the relationships, and in your case, there won't be colors that you have to look at, so you don't have to stress about that. Okay, so we've got your comic strips, and they've got several frames. Here's a few examples. So in frame one, they normally, uh, normally establish your characters or your settings or your situation. In frame two and frame three, something normally happens. And in the final frame, there's a punchline. Now, ladies and gents, you don't have to worry if you don't get the joke. In some cases, it's not supposed to be that funny. It's not a ha-ha-ha type of joke. It's sometimes just a, oh my word, these people and their jokes type of thing. Okay, so how do we start? You have to look at the characters and their clothing. You have to look at the setting and the props, and you need to look at what's happening and the dialogue. So what are they saying? Um, what are their facial expressions? They will always ask you facial expressions. Um, make sure you see a frame number um, and look at your source. Now, these types of comic strips you would normally find in your exam paper at question three-ish. Um, it is part of your language. Um, so be careful, even though you have a visual in your comprehension section, they do still throw in comprehension type questions within your language. So they'll ask you questions on language from your comic strip, but also about facial expressions and um, what you see type comprehension questions. So be careful. You get different types of bubbles. Obviously, that will tell you whether they are thinking, whether they are talking or whether they are shouting. So make sure that you know exactly what type of bubble it is. Remember, bubbles are bottles in Afrikaans. Facial expressions, you have to indicate um, the emotion and it needs to be described. So when you look at your facial expressions, it's always going to be something about eyebrows, your mouth and body language. So learn the words in Afrikaans. Do not write mouth of mouths of try and make Ugh, wacht, wat is in word in examen gesed? Uh, uh, I can't even remember. You say that wuch is wuch or something like that. Don't do not do that. Um, you learn the word eyebrow, which is um, you know, wenkbrauwe, uh, mond. You can say the mond is oop. You can say the oor is groot. Uh, learn these ones at the bottom that I've got for you here. Uh, make sure that you are able to describe the facial expressions that you see. So here, for example, this is from your 2018 paper. And what we have here is um, a question, language questions, but they do look at this as well. So when you look at this, you look at the facial expression, her body language, the hand that she is pointing, etc. You can see the frame numbers, what they are saying, the type of bubbles, etc. Okay, so when we look at the questions, you'll see that 4.3 and 4.4 from this paper has to do with um, the visual. So how, and in 4.3, how are the doctor's words in the two beklemd toon? How is her words being emphasized? 4.4, why is the doctor in the rampie two is her mouth so groot oop? So you have to explain why her mouth is open. Everything else that you see here is language questions. So do you see how they hide your visuals inside your language paper? Then we go to the comic. Um, when comics, uh, comics are done in a single frame, you normally find them in newspapers and they make fun of a current, a current or relative, uh, relevant issue. Here are a few of those. Then when we look at this one, where to begin? You look at the characters and the clothing, you look at the settings and the props, look at what is happening as well as dialogue. So here we go. There you have facial expression, what is being said, um, you've got the artist, 
and then you've got your source as well as which newspaper article it is from. Normally, there would be an action as well, like uh, picking something up, walking out, so make sure you look at that as well. This one is from the paper, um, 2018 paper, and when you look at this one, you'll see facial expressions. You have to look at everybody's facial expressions, look at the surroundings, what do you see, and what is happening. So your questions here, because this is part of your visual comprehension, you'll see it's still part of question one. So these are all based on the visual. So they are all comprehension. So 1.20, for example, what do you think, as I say, that the first school day not just a great train dal achterlaat nie. So you have to look at what is the uh, what is the boy saying? What does he mean by those words? 1.21, op wat er twee maniere versterk die ma, die sienkiese woorde. So when you look at the, uh, the mother, how is she emphasizing the boy's words? So that would be her actions, her jumping up in the air. Um, she's giving thumbs up, she's having a big smile, she's dancing, she looks like she's yelling, anything like that. 1.22, hier een rede waarom ons kan sê dat hierdie kinders heel moendlik nie hulle daar voor die TV omsit nie. So you have to give one reason why we can assume they don't um, watch TV all day long and that is when you look at the surrounding um, area, you see toys outside, you see a bike, when you look at the children you see them with sporting equipment and books, um, so it's evident that they don't spend a lot of time with electronics or TV. 1.23, die kinders pa voel nie soos die ma oor die kinders eerste schooldag nie. Sê waarom hier die stelling onwaar is. So it says that the father doesn't feel the same as the mother, but that's not true. When you look at the father's face, he's also smiling, he is waving them uh, goodbye um, excitedly. Um, anything in that regard, you can talk about how he's um, smoking his pipe, um, he's not phased with them going. 1.24, is dit correct om die afleiding uit die spotprint hierbo te maak dat kinders gewoonlik na die begin van een nieuwe schoolkwartaal uitzien? Do you think that it's correct to make the assumption from this comic um, above that children are normally excited to have the new term to start and motivate your answer? Okay, so then you can also in this case have graphs um, with your uh, comprehension. We didn't have a graph in 2018, but graphs are important. You have to read the headings, read the labels and axes carefully. Look at highs and lows, especially when there's percentages. We don't have colors, but you'll have to look at the shadows, like uh, a little grayer or a little darker gray, um, etc. And look for arrows in which direction they point. Are they pointing up or down? You have to make conclusions and predictions. And remember that there are things like keys, uh, bar charts, your circle diagram, etc. Statistics. When you look at your graph, it's normally statistical in nature. It's found in your newspaper and it re uh, relays statistics and projections. This could be a weekly weather chart as well, and it will have legends and pictures. So here we've got one for Valentine's Day 2018. And as you can see, there's pictures, which would be counting as legends in this case. You've got percentages. You've got a bar graph going from high to low. Um, there are also a little thing on the side that shows you the different prices of a picnic basket. So, all the little things you have to look at. This one does not come from your exam paper, but I wanted to show you what it would look like. So, it says here at your heading, and then also your little headings on the side, um, that it has to do with, um, this is how much, uh, how many people have had uh, traffic violations and they've been caught for it. Okay, so, ons het dronk bestuur, when you look at your picture, it helps you, so that would be alcohol. Roekeloos bestuur, driving um, uh, recklessly. You've got voertuig wat onwettig is, so um, vehicles that are not uh, roadworthy. En voertuig wat in swak toestand, wat nou vir pad mag wees, nie is a bad condition that should not be on the roads. And then you have your colors I spoke of. Um, you've got your legends at the top, so it's two different colors representing two different years. And when you look at the pictures as well as the numbers, it will show you which year was higher than another, as well as giving you the amounts that they might ask you about. Then in question four, um, three or four, I can't remember now which way around, I think this is four, you might get something like an advertisement or um, a poster 
and both of them basically work the same way. It has the ABBA method. Now, this ABBA method can also help you um, in writing your uh, paper threes. So ABBA stands for Aandag, Belangstelling, Begeerte in Actie. So it needs to draw your attention, um, pique your interest, create a desire, and then lead you to action. Um, look at things like, for example, alliteration and repetition. They do love to play with words as well as um, slogans. And they will always ask you about the target audience. Who is this um, advertisement aimed at? In this advertisement, uh, we need to look at the following. What is being advertised? What company is advertising? Where can you find it? Who is the target audience? Where is the contact information? And are there any special offers? So this one is from your 2018 paper that we are going through. And we have your heading here talking about um, a holiday. Over here, it talks about the different things that you need um, to go on holiday. Those are your piquing the person's interest. Are you maybe someone that needs a holiday? So it piques interest. We've got the pictures here. Um, try, I don't know why there's a dog, um, but all the other ones show you um, holiday pictures. Uh, you've got where or the company as well as the information. Now, 3.1, when you look at this question here, these are your visual questions. Now, do you see the question three? Even though it is a language question, um, it is riddled with visual uh, questions. So here, how does the adver advertiser make the um, heading more personal? So then you have to look for what, what makes it more personal. Um, is the die druk die opskrif boa nie advertensie gebruik verskillende lettergrootes, werk met verskillende lettertypes, begin met de algemene vraagsin, and in this case, they do make it personal by asking you a question, a question that you need to answer, en het jy een vakantie nodig. Hoe word die volgende sinne in die advertensie met prente voorgestel, hoor jy vakantie, en hier by ons het jy rede om van oor tot oor te glimlach, so there's the reason for the dog picture. So you have to look at which picture suits these questions. 3.7, kies die correcte antwoord, die S alliteratie in die naam van die vakantie oor, skep een gevoel van ongemak of rustigheid. So you have to choose which one, it's rustigheid. En dan wat doen die adverteerder om die leeser te manipuleer, they will love to ask you manipulating questions. Um, how do they manipulate you to choose see in sand vakantie oor? Name one technique. So you have to go back to your um, advertisements and see how did they manipulate you? Was it the pictures that made you feel like you really, really needed a holiday? Um, or was it a special offer? Was it the alliteration in the words see in sand vakantie oor? Um, what did they do to draw you to apply or to um, look at this place for a holiday? Thanks for watching guys. Remember if you've got any questions, you can follow me on Instagram at Afrikaans Classroom. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos, like and share.